Welcome back to Warhammer 40k Lore 2. Today, we're talking about the indomitable heavy assault tank of the Adeptus Astartes, the mighty Land Raider. This armored transport vehicle features both an expansive transport bay capable of housing heavy armored infantry, like Gravis or Terminator equipped Space Marines, and carries an array of powerful weaponry for use in either anti tank or anti infantry roles. Also, it was named after a guy! It's not called a Land Raider because it's a land vehicle that raids it was named after a dude whose name was land what the f is 40k lord What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and recently I played a game using only tanks and specifically the Land Raider. Well, not literally only Land Raiders. That's not actually a legal way to play 40k since every list needs at least one character to act as a warlord, but pretty goddamn close because we had seven. Is that legal? With some exceptions, no single unit can be included in an army more than three times. So how did we take seven Land Raiders? Fortunately for us, that's a restriction imposed on each individual data sheet and there are three land raider data sheets these are split between the flamethrower equipped land raider redeemer this is fine the bolter equipped land raider crusader and the las cannon equipped basic land raider which sometimes people call god hammer land raiders because that's what they call their types of las cannons so that's what i'm gonna do sometimes in this video land raiders are also famously exceptional transports with their distinct assault ramp that allows embarked units to charge out of them even after the land raider moves. We don't need that ramp though, so we've welded them shut in this list. Fortunately for us, they aren't actually dedicated transports though. They just have transport capabilities. So we're not required to actually use their transport capacity by putting stuff in them because uh, we're, we're not going to do that. As it turns out, land raiders cannot in fact embark other land raiders. As with all space marine lists, we get to start the list by deciding which of the many delicious flavors of space marines will be space marine today. So many flavors. Now for an army like this one, you would expect us to take a vehicle focused detachment like the Iron Storm Spearhead. But one of the big issues with large ranged attackers like the Land Raider is actually maneuvering them around the table and gaining light of sight. As it turns out, most enemies do not like to be seen by Laz Cannon or Flamestorm equipped main battle tanks. With their big hull, large terrain features can also get into the Land Raider's way, and enemies can predict their threat range to simply hide behind terrain and make sure that there's no line at which the Land Raider can see them. Who made a list entirely full of Land Raiders? It's like so difficult to measure my lands of sight. Which is why we are instead going today with the Firestorm Assault Force Detachment. This grants the assault keyword to every single ranged weapon in our army, allowing our tanks to advance an additional D6 inches and still fire their guns. Outside of some very specific situations, we're most likely not charging with these guys. Land Raiders, while known for being difficult to kill, great at transporting infantry, and carrying a bevy of guns, are not known for their dueling prowess. This improves our mobility from the normal 10 to 12 inches, depending on the variant of Land Raider, to an impressive 16-ish movement, making it much harder to hide from their frankly unnecessary array of pintle-mounted small arms. We have just too many guns. Even cooler, the detachment's close range strength bonus is a game changer for all of those staggeringly vast number of bolt guns, flamers, and multi-meltas that the tech marines have duct taped to the top of the vehicle. <laughs> We've also got access to the Immolation Protocol Stratagem, an extremely powerful strat that grants devastating wounds to our torrent weapons. Weapons such as the ludicrously overpowered Flamestorm Cannons on the Land Raider Redeemer variant. To supercharge these Super Soakers, we're also going to be enlisting the help of the Salamander's Chapter Master, meaning that we are joining the flame-obsessed Salamander's Chapter today and giving us access to Vulcan Heston. A Vulcan is a quirky character that adds 
a much needed objective control characteristic to the list with his ability to choose an objective and gain OC 10 while holding it. Most importantly though, he also brings a big old can of kerosene around to douse nearby enemies and grant full rerolls to our flamers and multi-meltas, which most of the land raiders happen to be packed with. With that combo in mind, we'll start off with three land raider redeemers and to add some longer range firepower, three of the standard godhammer pattern, alongside one land raider crusader to add anti-infantry firepower. That takes up almost all of our points, but to help us actually score victory points, my favorite thing, I've also filled out the remainder of the list with a combi weapon lieutenant and a Kalidus assassin and submitted it to a tournament. Now, as of recording, I've actually played two games with the list so far. In the first round of the tournament, I was paired into Adepta Sororitas, and despite having a few multi melt of bricks and castigators alongside the Triumph, Dialogus, and Palatine combo, the Sororitas army struggled to get through the... Carry the three... Seven. 112 toughness 12 2 plus save wounds jesus christ that's so many i think <laughs> it's it's tough with all the multi melters in the land raider shoe the sister squad can probably kill one land raider but they can't kill five land raiders <laughs> no kind of no <laughs> in round two however i was paired into death guard who can use their new contagions of nurgle to reduce the armor save of my units and give themselves a distinctly better matchup into my degenerate skew list in this game we were playing chosen battle Field, which gives us a pre-game phase to take turns setting up objectives. While well, I tried to concentrate all of the objectives in the middle so I could entirely encompass them with the prodigious bulk of my wildly oversized land raiders, my opponent intelligently and very rudely, I might add, put as many objectives as they could behind ruins in the corners of the table, making them difficult for me to get to and maneuver around. To make matters worse, the Death Guard Plague Company's detachment ability allows their units to project gunk all over those objectives, allowing them to lock them under my opponent's control, even if I'm able to shoot their units off. Now, my opponent's host was packed with Chaos Knights, Plague Burst Crawlers, Rhinos, and Biologus Putrefire. So, for the once in a blue moon, I actually chose fixed secondaries for this game, taking both Bring It Down and Assassinate. Luckily, I did win the roll to go first. I hopped out Vulcan to help set him off to bump my flamers for round two, and with a fistful of assaulting Laz Cannons, I was able to snipe out a lone character. My opponent was was trying to score deployed teleport homers with. Draw so many lines today, it's like art class. I also had some ridiculously good dice and also killed a Plague Burst Crawler kind of randomly, which uh, is a pretty good start to any game. And then the only other thing I have to do is this guy, he's just gonna bump everything into the wounded Plague Burst Crawler. Damage, five more. Oh, I can shoot an assault cannon here, so I'll do that. Roll sixes. Hey, two sixes. We did it. We did it. We got one guy. That was a very good turn one, chat. We got a character and a vehicle. Let's fucking go, dude. Unfortunately, I had moved my Kalidus assassin a little bit too aggressively to engage in an epic duel with some Nurglings, and a feisty Plague Burst Crawler got within her lone operative range to blow her away before she could use her Reign of Confusion to muck with my opponent's stratagems. But you didn't see that one coming. The tactical occupant and dis on display here is, is blowing my mind. Should I be starting a YouTube channel? Be like, when your opponent has stuff in line of sight, move out and shoot at it. That'll be $30 on my Patreon. Now, a cool piece of technology that the Firestorm Assault Force has access to is the strategy of rapid embarkation, which allows a unit to re-embark into a transport at the end of either player's fight phase, provided that unit hadn't disembarked in the same turn. Since Vulcan had already disembarked the Land Raider in the last round, he was free to drop his buff down in the shooting phase before escaping into his nearby ride. As I mentioned before, my opponent had also brought fixed objectives, one of which was deploy teleport homers. Now, unfortunately for them, the ruthless assassination of several of their utility units meant that an entire Plague Burst Crawler had to move into the center of the table to take the action in the first round. Still, the remaining War Dogs and Plague Burst Crawler laid into my hapless Land Raider Crusader and one of the Godhammer Pattern Land Raiders on my right, putting them both to relatively low wounds. Undeterred, however, my Crusader vowed its vengeance against the Plague Burst Crawler and- God is my witness, you want Grateful fucks, I will have my life! With the help of a rambunctious Vulcan, laser beamed that Plague Bridge Crawler directly into the Great Beyond with a single multi melta shot. They both hit, went on fours because we're plus one strength two on your invuln. Uh, we're melted range, so plus two. So seven second dice is okay, uh, eight, so 15 damage. Wow. 
awkwardly leaving several of my other land raiders with no good targets to shoot at. I set this guy up very carefully to shoot at this Blake Ridge Crawler that I killed, I wildly overkilled, so I guess I can't feel bad about that. Unfortunately, my luck turned around later on in the turn as the Warthog that I laid my last cannon attacks into had been declared by Morpheus to be the one that would save all of humanity from the predations of the machines since it activated its bullet time and evaded every single attack that I sent at it with a bunch of cool twirls and twists. It was really revolutionary to the cinema industry at the time, but also made me really mad. Nice. Uh, and then the late, big laser cannons. Big laser beams. Uh, Reroll for oath. Wounds on uh, threes. Two on your invuln safe. Or armor safe, either one. Should be the same. Nice. Okay, fair enough. On the front guy, here are my laser beams. Reroll for oaths. Wounds on threes. Two more on your invuln safe. Okay, okay. Well. That's, that sucks. <laughs> On the opposite flank, my opponent had a rhino full of plague marines moving aggressively to attack my home objective. Unfortunately for them, they were ambushed by one of nature's quickest and stealthiest assassins, the Redeemer Pattern Land Raider. She hits her target 60% of the time, the most lethal hunters. One of them came out of strategic reserve to ambush the rhino and another one that had already been on the table and was able to get around the back with an advance roll were able to kill that rhino, but didn't have any attacks remaining to deal with the plague marines inside. Those plague marines did what plague marines love to do and jumped out of those transports. The five on the left hand side fighting the two redeemers dealing a casual 10 damage to one of them before attempting a heroic charge and being cooked to death on overwatch. On the other side however a larger brick of 10 finally put my crusader to rest alongside one of my las cannon equipped land raiders with a flurry of grenades and melted gun shots. However, the Crusader continued its crusade of bloody vengeance and elected to explode. Do I explode? That would be cool. Oh, I think it's these three. So on the Plague Bruce Crawler, I guess. Take three. The Plague Marines. Six. The War Dog. Two. That was... Ouchie. Now at this point, my land raiders were on the table and my opponent was pushing pretty hard. And the mission we were playing was Vital Ground, which counts the objectives as double at the end of the game. Meaning that I had to push back pretty hard to secure objectives since my opponent would have last turn, since I went first, and have an opportunity to get those double points. With that in mind, Vulcan disembarked again to buff my guns against one of the remaining war dogs and charge into the disembarked Plague Marine Brick, a task at which he failed absolutely miserably, killing no Plague Marine but at least retaking the objective. With Vulcan's help, the remaining land raiders cleared out the last of my opponent's war dogs, and thanks to some big advance rolls, began trundling as fast as their little treads could carry them towards the central objective. While one Plague Burst Crawler and a brick of Plague Marines were still at large, I was able to engage the Plague Burst Crawler from behind a wall, preventing it from firing its entropy cannons entirely, since it would have had to fall back to shoot, and while engaged, didn't have any enemies in line of sight to fire them at using big guns never tire. Now that last unit of Plague Marines successfully dealt with Vulcan before pushing forward to try to kill my land raiders, dealing significant damage to my redeemer that was engaging the Plague Burst Crawler. In order to break my opponent's control of objectives for the end of the game, since they had been locked in by the Plague Company detachment ability, I fell back my engaged land raider to steal the objective in my opponent's deployment zone, and paid my one remaining CP on the last round of the game to insane bravery a redeemer in the center. That was the one that had been beaten up by the five-man Plague Marine squad way back in the game and was on very low wounds. After much deliberation, wondering where I was going to send that land raider, I decided to brave an overwatch shot from the Plague Marine squad to open up a charge into the remaining Plague Burst Crawler to steal the objective it's on. Since the land raider's extremely high OC of 5 is superior to the inferior Death Guard tanks. Listen up, you absolute peasants. Daddy's hungry. Daddy's hungry. My opponent did overwatch, and after one of the uh, most stressful overwatch attacks of my entire life... Drumroll, please. Yay. All right, we've survived the first one. Are we overcharging Plasma, by the way? Uh, we are. Um, okay, yeah. I, I can see well. PR on overwatch, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. For sure. Damn. Well, there's a, there's one. So that's AP2, yeah? AP2. Uh, so I'll save on a three. Oh, take it. So I'm down to two. Uh -oh. We're down to three. And you have a okay. flamer, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Am I going to live on one? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So far. 
Wow. <laughs> this <Okay>. game. <laughs> oh my god. The Land Raider survived with a single wound remaining, and the combined shooting of my army punished the Plague Marine unit for its hubris, peeling them and their attached character off the table to give me another score of assassinate. The Land Raider bravely charged into battle before promptly taking one wound from the Plague Burst Crawler in melee. <sighs> All right, Plug Burst Crawler, what do you got, buddy? Just one? Oh, oh my god. Oh! Wounded? On your three up? Big green die for Big Green Land Raider. Let's go. One or two. One or two. Hey, yeah. No! Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yes. All right. Ready? The Constellation Prize. I'm going to explode and kill you. Okay. Oh, that sucks. Oh, is right. That allowed my opponent to retain control of their objective and lock it in to score it both at the start of their turn and the end of the game. However, in order to take the objective that I had stolen from them in their own deployment zone, they had to clear off the healthier redeemer that was on their own table edge for the win. So if you charge and kill this guy, you would max, or you'd get four more bring, and I would get this. Yeah, I think if you charge and kill that guy, you win by one. At this point, there was just a rhino that had been deploying teleport hummers in my deployment zone, alongside a single character who was unattached and cowering to not give up assassination points, and that one remaining Plague Burst Crawler that my opponent had available to do so. And that was a task at which that one remaining Plague Burst Crawler wasn't quite prepared, leaving the Land Raider alive on a couple wounds and solidly holding the objective. Unable to block my domination of the board at the end of the game, the vital ground scoring conditions meant that I squeaked the victory away with an extremely tight 86 to 94. So, in conclusion, Land Raiders are pretty good.